on the last video I did on the Ledger Wallet, there was a lot of uh, a lot of interest in that one. Uh, a lot of people saw the physical flash drive that was soldered in there as a reason to open up their wallets to see if they had one in there too. Now let's recap that attack real quick. Existing Ledger owners were receiving in the mail a new wallet, shrink wrapped and everything. Inside it was instructions saying that their old wallet was insecure and they had to migrate to this new wallet. They were told to plug in the new wallet to their computer, a drive would be mounted, and on that drive was a migration tool that they would use to migrate to the new wallet. That migration tool would then steal their passphrase and with it all the contents of the wallet. The big tells were the letter they received had some very awkward wording, and when you would open up the wallet to look inside, you would see a flash drive soldered onto the wallet. Now, it's not hard to imagine how to improve that letter. So I wanted to see if I could make the hardware aspect of this implant better. Could I make it completely invisible to visual inspection? Well, I got my hands on a wallet too. And this one performs exactly the same as the implanted wallet, but you're going to notice something, which is there is no visible implant here. So I asked Michael Osman to help out with the firmware on this. We put this little demo together that I think demonstrates uh, escalation pathways. So if you think you can open your wallet and visibly see compromise like this, uh, it's not true. So here I have the PCB removed from the wallet so you can see nothing else is attached to it. And when we plug it in, thumb drive pops up. On it you can see the Ledger EXE with the little Ledger logo on it. And when we run it, for purposes of this demo, we're just gonna launch the calculator so that you can see it's not the legitimate software. So as you can see, the same effect of having a mass storage device with malware on it is achievable without any sort of visible changes to the hardware. So basically what we're gonna do is get a new chip, we're gonna put it onto this wallet, swap the two out and put some firmware onto the new chip that makes it act like a mass storage device. So here's what it looks like to physically modify this wallet. First thing we do is put it on a hot plate to reflow. When that's nice and hot, we can lift off the chip. And then put a new one on it. Be very careful with the placement. Now we let it cool down and the board is done. And you can see it looks exactly the same. At this point, we just flash it using some custom probes I made via SWD. So on this board, there's a STM32 microcontroller that talks to the secure element. Now that's how the wallet works, but what if you don't care about it being a wallet? What if you just want it to be a thumb drive? You can do that too. So there's already firmware out there for the STM32 that turns it into a mass storage device, aka thumb drive. Now, thanks to the wallet.fail guys, Ledger learned to lock down the ability to change the firmware in here. Now, there's two ways of dealing with that. You can just swap the component, put a new STM32 on there. That's what I did because it's quick and easy. But you don't have to do that. You could put a little more polish into this and use something like a Chip Whisperer. Chip Whisperer does power glitching. There are known bypasses to the locking that is in place on the STM32 here that the Chip Whisperer can bypass. Uh, this is made by Colin O'Flynn. It is really cool. This is another fun hardware security pathway I would highly recommend playing around with. Um, Michael Osman does a lot of really cool stuff. So things like the Hack RF, uh, Anything under the Great Scott Gadgets umbrella is uh, Michael Osman, and he's working on something really cool that I got my hands on early, the uh, the Luna. I highly recommend checking it out if you're into USB hardware hacking, or just if you're just into USB hacking at all. Uh, Luna is really cool. You can 
basically on the fly create devices, uh, intercept. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff it can do, and um, I'm already having fun with it. Now, if you want to learn a lot about hardware hacking, Joe Fitzpatrick does some extremely good classes. I've taken them. I've helped him actually run some of his classes at DEF CON and Black Hat. Learn.securinghardware.com. There's just so many different things he covers and so many different classes. Just I highly recommend checking it out. So let's right off the bat cover the which hardware wallet should I use. The answer to that is I don't care. I just want to your up. So first, I need to point out that Ledger doesn't seem like they consider this type of thing a vulnerability. Looking at prior research, if you go to wallet.fail, there is some really cool research done there. Now, they had a hardware implant and did a whole bunch of other interesting stuff. Uh, Ledger seemed very dismissive of a hardware implant being a viable attack pathway. But here we are a couple of years later, and there are implants being mailed to people. In general, though, it seems like if you are not attacking the secure element in the wallet, then they don't care. Some people would argue that's fair, some wouldn't. So I think there's an easy answer to that, and it comes down to whether you as a customer understand the threat model implications of Ledger only being responsible for the secure element on the wallet. Now, if you don't know what that means, it's probably not a good fit for you. But basically, you have to be tricked somehow to deviate from the official process of setting up and interfacing with the Ledger wallet. Another thing, Ledger gives you pictures so you can audit your your hardware in your wallet. I noticed that the wallet I got is a new revision and they haven't posted that on the website. So that's about all I had for this. I'm just sharing some research. If you liked it, cool. If you didn't like it, cool. 